Hi there, my name is Vladimir Rusov and I am the co-founder and CEO of the Gutenbergs. Gutenbergs is a storytelling company that has an ambition mission to connect narrative and interactivity. Yes, we understand that it's very hard, maybe impossible, but yes, we can. And I want to tell you about our first attempts and several projects that we had already done and published. Uh, let's pass by about our rules, principles. They will be interesting maybe 20 years later and stop on our first project, Sherlock Holmes for the iPad. It was our first attempt, as I said before, because Sherlock Holmes for the iPad and Arthur Conan Doyle are in public domain, the hero is very popular. And also we were preparing this project uh, with uh, the promo campaign of the first part, Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey the Young. But as we prepared more than one year to start the project, the second part was already done and maybe they're working now on the third. What was interesting in this project? We tried not to make the game from the book and we not tried to uh, make the text uh, edit with photos, videos, audio files. We wanted to make something absolutely new to make interactive experience uh, which can uh, make the reading process more efficient, more effective, more fun, but which doesn't kill the reading process. At the core there is a story, it's a narrative which is added by interactivity. Uh, we can give the opportunity and possibility to the reader become the hero of the story. Among Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson, you can investigate, uh, you can look in different uh, secret objects on the pages. Every secret object on page uh, you can find is absolutely unique and maybe every of 100 uh, pages has its own secret to reveal. Not from the first time you read the book, from the second, from the third, it's very interesting and it's very exciting. Uh, want to say that this project had some success. It was popular in USA, it was featured by Apple in top 10 book apps. It was also chosen as best book app designed by Apple in 2012. Uh, now we are working on our second project, which has uh, an maybe more ambitious aim. We want not only to connect interactivity with narrative, but connect physical and digital platforms. It's very hard to explain, and I want to show you if you give me a minute for it. Because sure. it's very interesting to see. Dmitry, can you hold for a second my precious book? Can I ask cameraman to show what will be happening? This It's like magic. So now we have on my screen the Polaroid gadget, but when the gadget is clock, it's already here. No QR codes, no markers. It's a truly 3D model you can play with, you can investigate. On your eyes, 2D drawing is uh, transforming to the 3D model. You can also hear the different text, interesting historical anecdotes about this. So your kids can uh, take an engaging information about the book. So if you're tired from the clock, you can find the next gadget. Here it is, the Polaroid, it's all on your screen. Also 3D, additional info, audio files, music. So connecting the printed edition with digital one, we enhance the experience for people who read it. For example, I have a son, he's two years old, and it's very interesting for me and for him too, to spend time together, not only reading, but only interacting with these models. I am reading him the text in the book, and he's listening to the text from the author in the iPad. And he also interacts with 3D objects, so he gets the full comprehensive information about interactive history of gadgets. This is what I want to show you. Uh, to connect interactivity with narration and also to connect digital world with the physical world. To save the book, to save the reading process and make it more than interesting and effective for 21st century. That's all I want to say. It's not <laughs> five minutes, maybe it's two minutes or one minute, but I wanted to show you because I think it's really cool. Thanks. Uh, the, the perception of time, it's, it was exactly 4 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, but the, uh, it's, it's very cool. Um, and I'm wondering what the jury uh, thinks. I have problems with timing, so I, sh I thought it was one minute. Maybe, uh, Sam, do you have uh, anything to add here? 
Um, it's obviously Jim. very interesting and uh, seems very um, entertaining, uh, but uh, the secret in that word is that it's a, this is an entertainment uh, company, so you build projects and uh, basically you need to ensure that whatever you create has demand, is, is appealing to, to a large market. And that's uh, very difficult to predict, uh, very difficult to model, very difficult to replicate. I mean, the movie industry, video game industry has, has, has shown us this. So it actually uh, reminds me of, of that. Are there any sort of secret unfair advantage points that you can, you can share basically that gives you a high likelihood of being able to repeat this type of appeal that you're able to demonstrate with Sherlock Unfortunately, Holmes? Unfortunately, I don't have the secret of success for Sherlock Holmes for the iPad, I think that it is the good quality of the product we spent one year developing it. Also, original stylish illustration. We have hundreds of positive reviews all over the world in USA and only one truly negative from a father from USA who said that he likes it very much but his daughter cried all the night. Because illustration, you see, not standard as is. Uh, what key principles that give us a success Maybe I can't say what they are. You have the movie Batman by Nolan is a success and uh, Superman is a trash. Both with great budgets and money. What the secret? Maybe it's a complex of different things. And we try to connect them in our projects. Who owns the content? Who owns the content? Who owns the content? Yeah. We are as a publishing house who owns the content. If you speak about Gadgetarium, the texts are written by our author, also the illustrations, design, and software. And you get paid for what? We sell in App Store and also on Android Market, Google Play, our content. So what's the revenue share with a publisher right now? No, Apple takes 30% uh, share revenue. Uh, if you speak about Sherlock Holmes, it's uh, Sherlock direct, Holmes. direct sales, uh, the app costs $3. We make them dif different discounts. But if you speak about Gadgetarium, this is a printed book which sells for the money. Uh, as a present, the uh, augmented reality app that comes from the book. And also the full uh, digital iPad app where you can uh, use the functions from the printed book and also from augmented reality book, which is sold in the App Store for three, four dollars. And where are you going to sell the book? Uh, today we first present this to people and to maybe its audience, and we have two or three months to make it in mass product. There are not all gadgets, there are only two which work really good, and we have 40 gadgets to be done. But the technology that makes them work is already working, and you have seen this. Yeah, so uh, it looks beautiful, but I think that as, uh, as uh, many media companies or entertainment companies, because your business model is very similar to movie industry technically, or, or gaming industry, we're creating high quality content is expensive and is taking time and the outcome is to a large extent unpredictable and uh, achieving repetitive predicti pre predictive results can be difficult in the business so this is probably one of the biggest challenges you're going to have yes we understand them we have often questions about how we can predict that our next project will not, will not be a failure because our Sherlock Holmes for the iPad was success, I think that Gadgetarium will be success, but it doesn't mean that our third project or fourth project will be success too. So we can imagine, create, work on our quality, make good marketing, presenting our product, but make a 100% guarantee that it will be success, I can say so. Yeah, content and entertainment business is to a large extent driven by hits. Of course. And there is no probably, you know, that was one of the questions Jem had, but unfortunately there is probably no secret sauce that will allow anyone to predict and to, to, to create hit every time. And, and, and this is something that, you know, I think that if you want to get confidence of, of, of investors, I think uh, it would be, the, the main element would be explaining how you can keep growing and, and achieving predictable results without hits. 
We have one more project I didn't mention in this presentation because I can show it now. But it is about making the platform which can be useful, which can be uh, growing and can be international. I'm speaking about the content creator for the long form journaling where you take the text which has the author, uh, adding uh, multimedia content, 3D graphics, uh, infographics, interactive, and without knowing programming skills, software development, design. So this is a very simple, uh, intuitive interface uh, content creator platform for long-form journalists, which is also a marketplace and also a platform for monetizing this content. Okay, cool. Can we see that? But if the theme for a big presentation, I can't now tell all the details. Of course, we understand. It's only five minutes. Can we see that at the exhibitor space? Do you have a booth there? Yes, I showed uh, to people who wanted to sit in okay, the exhibitor so you space. Want to see that? And now you have the possibility to go mm -hmm. and to see this. It's really cool. working. So you can go over to uh, Gutenberg's and, and, and see what they got, the guys are doing. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Give them a hand. <laughs>